Hi, welcome to my gallery. I'm Tim Packer. Uh, we just recently had our very first paint along evening. Uh, and this first one was a trial thing that we did to see if we wanted to do these in future. And it turned out to be a really incredible success. So we've put together a little video showing you our first paint night. Uh, and we've already scheduled our second one. Now our second one is gonna be a scene similar to this. Um, there's been a lot of demand for me to show people how I paint my birch trees. So the next paint along, we're going to be focusing on doing something similar to this. Um, now, because of the fact that we're serving wine and we're operating under a special occasion permit, I can't actually make this available to the general public. So the only way that you can be invited to register to this paint along is by subscribing to my newsletter. So you can do that by going to my website at www.timpacker.com. Just scroll to the bottom of the page and fill out the form and you'll get my newsletter. Now we're planning on sending out our newsletter in the next few days and that will have a link to a hidden page where you can sign up uh, for this workshop uh, for the paint launch. So there's only 16 spots and it'll be first come first serve. The, it's coming up in August. Now what you'll get when you arrive is you'll have a gicle of my composition on a red canvas stretched ready for you on an easel waiting to paint. You'll have all of your colors squeezed out and mixed by me all of the brushes that you need to complete the painting and you'll be able to have a couple glasses of wine as well and you can follow along with me as I paint my scene. Now we're also going to offer the finished painting that I create um, it's going to be available at 50% of retail for that night only to attendees so you will also have the opportunity to get one of my originals at a real bargain price. So that's what's coming up. Um, so here's the video uh, showing our first night um, and I hope you enjoy it. things you will ever attempt in your life to get good at and nobody starts good um, but the nice thing about it is you can still have a lot of fun doing it even if you're not very good and I'm proof of that when it comes to golf so for tonight we have people of a variety of different experience levels for those of you who are absolute beginners um, just two things just come in here with the mindset that you're gonna have some fun, you're gonna try this. Now I guarantee you, some of the absolute beginners are gonna do knock your socks off pieces. Uh, and I'll explain why that is in a minute. But the whole goal of this is to come to learn a little bit about, about painting, learn about the way I paint, have a chance to try using these water soluble oils and try using, because I know for a lot of people, they maybe they're not a painter yet, but they think maybe they might like to be, or they might like to try it. So this is a great, um, a great opportunity to do that. And just when I'm talking about what I'm doing, I'm also gonna try and make this a program that is where it's, it's a lot of fun and value for people who are beginners, but I also wanna provide value for the people who are, who are more experienced painters. And there's an easy way to kind of tell who I'm talking, who I'm talking to. So when I'm, for you beginners, when I'm talking about what to do and what I'm doing, then that's, that's for you guys. For the more experienced painters, I'm going to be talking a lot about the why, why I'm doing this, why I'm doing that, and for, because whys are very, very important uh, when it comes to painting. It's not just what, if you guys just follow along and do even a half decent job of doing what I do, you'll create a half decent painting, but for the ones who are more experienced painters, if you want to take a lot of the whys and then be able to apply it to your paintings when you go home, then I'm going to be trying to teach that level too. And if you have any questions while I'm painting, please shout it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the water soluble oils themselves. So anybody here already paint in water soluble oils? Everybody? Uh, nobody. Uh, so these are the greatest things in sliced bread because in, tip, in my opinion, in the old oils, you had to use turpentine to clean your brushes. And that was the stuff that was really, really dangerous. And Cameron back there, my son, he, when he was born, he had asthma. Um, so I had the choice of either painting in watercolors or painting outside. So that's why I ended up segueing into watercolors for a number of years. And then they came out with these paints. 
Now, they're water soluble in the sense that you can clean your brushes with soap and water, but they're not like acrylics or watercolor where you dilute them with water to paint. So, so we, we don't do any of that. Uh, but what I've also done, you probably haven't noticed, every one of these canvases um, has a very thin coating of water-soluble linseed oil on it. Because it, in the typical oil painting, you thin your paints out with turpentine and that gives you those nice loose washes. Well, if you just paint on a dry canvas, it's painting dry brush and the paint doesn't spread. So if you are going to do this on your, on your own, instead of doing, putting that coating of water-soluble linseed on the, on the canvas, will allow the colors to really slide on. Now the tricky thing about these that's very different is cleaning your brushes. Um, so let's say for example, I've got some red paint in my brush and I've just done some red strokes and now I want to switch to another color. So there's a, there's a pretty standard kind of um, order of things that we do. So you've got that little thing of paper towel in front of you on the cardboard. So you wipe off the excess paint on your paper towel. The green jug has a little bit of soap in with the water. You rinse it there first. Then you rinse it in the clear water. Dry it off there. And then you wipe the excess off of your t-shirt. At least that's what I like to do. Because if you, have, if you don't get the excess water out of your brush, it is a solid, so the paint will start running on it. So you need to get the excess water out of your brush. So that's why I told everybody to wear a paint shirt or something you get paint on. If you don't have a paint shirt, then you might want to have paper towels in your hand just to squeeze the excess out. And the beauty of that is that's a cadmium red. It's totally out of that brush now. I can go to a cerulean blue, um, and you can't do that in typical oils. You need to have one brush for each of the major colors. So that's the whole idea when it comes to cleaning your brushes. Um, the other thing that is our best friend here are Q-tips. Um, and so the way that I paint is I paint kind of ass backwards compared to most artists. Most artists paint the sky first, then they paint the background and the middle ground and the foreground. We paint, so I paint the foreground first. Like these trees are the middle ground. But the very first thing we're going to put on here is the foreground leaves. And we're going to put the leaves on. And then at the very kind of towards the end, we're going to start painting the sky and the negative shapes between the branches. And that can be really tricky. And it can be very easy to say I'm painting, I'm trying to paint beside this branch and I paint over that branch. Um, there's a tendency that people want to do is to get the dark color and paint over top of that. That doesn't work, because it'll just keep mixing with the white, mixing with the white, mixing with the white. So this is where Q-tips come in, and the fact that it's water-soluble is great. You get two, two, two goes at it with a Q-tip. One on each side, don't do more than two. If you do more than two, you're eating paint. So do two, and then grab another Q-tip. Um, but that's how we make corrections with, with anything. Anything you do where you kind of put the paint where you don't want it to be, if you try to cover that with more paint, you will just get a big, big mess. So just grab a Q-tip, wet it in your mouth, and then wipe it off. Um, I need more Q-tips. <laughs> well, yeah, we've got, got lots. We've got lots here. I'll actually maybe put, I'll put a box on each table, and you can pass them around um, if you need more. And same, we've got paper towels kind of floating around. If you need more paper towels, just all out. There should be a bunch of the various tables. Uh, at the very end, there's a bunch of light pastel colors. Those are going to be your sky colors. So don't go in and touch those till we go to do the sky. At the very bottom of your palette, you've got, should be like a rainbow effect from yellow to blue. Those are going to be the ones that we use initially to kind of block in the glow of our sun. And all of these other colors in the middle, we're going to use those for our foreground foliage. Okay? And again, if you get confused, just let me know. But just, just know, stay, that's why I put them at the very top. Stay away from those pastels until till we start doing the sky. So what we want to do when we're, when we're creating a painting is we want to, first of all, we want to have a center of interest that draws the viewer's eye. And that's going to be this area in here, the sun, because um, it, it's the brightest area in the painting. And it's also a mnemonic shape. It's a shape that means a lot to us. There's been whole cultures kind of growing up around worshiping the sun. So whenever you have a sun in the painting, it's going to draw an enormous amount of attention. But what we also want to do, and what I try to do in all my paintings, is create all these pathways of movement. So what you want to do is draw the viewer's eye in, 
but then you want to have all these opportunities for their eye to move around the painting, sometimes like a pinball in a pinball machine, sometimes it's like riding a roller coaster, and ideally you want people standing in front of a painting for 10 minutes, and when that happens, I say that's the viewer's eyes like dancing with your painting, and that's what we want to do. So a lot of these things that I'm going to be doing when I start putting strokes of color on, is just creating these kind of nice flowing curves of color that are going to allow, allow our eye to kind of fall. For me, the photo is always just kind of a starting point that gets me going. Um, and, and so I'm just going to do, if you guys just want to watch me for like three minutes, and I'll do a bunch of strokes of color, show you how I do the pathways, and then you guys can start too. So for this one, you want to be using probably the biggest brush that you have in front of you. And with oils too, actually with paint in general, even if you make if you make a stroke that's really really bad, use a Q-tip to adjust it. But a, a stroke that's kind of confidently made, that's kind of wrong, is better than a right stroke that's tentatively made and worked over and worked over and worked over. So don't don't kind of. Um, give in to that tendency to want to go in and keep correcting everything if it's not exactly <laughs> like mine, or even if it's not exactly like you want it. Because sometimes what the painting wants to do is better than what you want to do, but you don't give it that opportunity if you're always going in correcting it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this here, and I'm gonna create some strokes of red, and I'm gonna create a pathway that, that kind of starts here, And it's gonna flow, this is gonna, it's gonna join in with this path of reds. And you notice, um, and maybe you don't notice, when you're doing these strokes, you want to avoid going one, two, three, four, all in the same direction. You can see that each time I, I touch the brush to the to the canvas, I'm slightly varying the the direction, the size of the stroke. Um, and again, just trying to avoid what I call marching soldiers, where you have all these things looking exactly the same. And like I was talking about before, like there's no real right or wrong. If I was to paint this painting 20 times, you would not get that same arrangement of reds or oranges. Um, and now what I do, so I've mixed a lot of the colors on there, but when I go, so I started with the red, because that's kind of my darkest color. Now I can go to my orange without cleaning my brush and just mix it in a little of the orange that's in there. And the other thing is, as we do get closer to the sun, the foliage is going to get a little warmer and lighter. And again, these strokes generally are better made quickly like that, almost like a dot, dot, dash, as opposed to, that's not a very good stroke, right? It's just, it, it's lacking the life. Uh, so if you can try and hold the brush, at least at this stage back here, as opposed to up here, because up here you're gonna control it, and it's not gonna be as good as you give the brush a little freedom and let it just dance a bit on there. Now, we also, when we're painting here, there's two things to consider. Um, so we're painting, I'm painting right now the absolute most foreground uh, leaves. Um, and you have to make a decision whether you want them to go over top of these trees in the foreground or not. If we put them over top, that means the leaves are in, in front of them. If we put them beside, it means they're beside. There's no right or wrong. It's just once you, you decide, you know, because after these first ones, then we're going to start making all of our leaves go at least beside these big trees, not over top of them. Um, anybody have any questions with that? No? Yeah? You start with your brush totally dry? Yeah. Yeah. The, although, again, every, with these, if you have a brush, and your brush is particularly stiff because these, well, these are all brushes that I've used. So um, you might have a brush that I haven't used in five years. If you go to do, so the brush should have a little bit of give in it. If the brush is like really stiff and you want to use the longest, the ones with the longest bristle with the biggest um, 
the biggest head on them right now. If that brush is a little stiff, then if you rinse it in the water and dry it off, it'll soften up a bit and it'll just give you a little more organic looking strokes. So, pick up your brushes <laughs> and start. Camera, okay, right. maybe a bottle of water for a lot of things. <laughs> So what, I, what I'm going to ask you to do is maybe just watch me for about five minutes and then when you feel you're ready or you've got most of your leaves on and then you want to go do the sun, then you can do that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the smallest brush that you have in front of you. And this is will be right down at the very bottom where you've got a white, a light yellow, and it goes right through the rainbow right to purple and blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little of that lightest yellow in with some white. And at this stage too, um, you may find this is really difficult to control the brush. Um, and what I do even now, I'll just put my finger on the canvas, but just pick a spot where there's no paint just to rest my finger. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do an outline, just the width of the brush around that white shape of the sun with a mixture of white and yellow, very, very light. And I did that all the way around the sun. I'm going to wash my brush in between these stages. But now what I'm going to do, so we're going to, what we're going to do to create that glow is we're going to have any of the foliage or the trees that are, that are kind of beside the sun, as we move away from the sun, it's going to do exactly what the colors do on your palette. It's going to go from light yellow to a deeper yellow to an orange to a red to a magenta to a purple and then slightly blue on the other side. But we've done that initial circle all the way around the sun, but now we're only going to put the color where the dark of the trees are. Because we're basically, once we put all our foliage in here, wherever you see the pure red of the canvas showing through, that's going to be sky. So now when we're going to be painting the, the color um, into, the, into the trees, we're only going to do it where it's black. And wherever we get to the red, we're just going to leave that. And this does not have to be um, super, super detailed or blended at this stage because the reason we've got this separate bunch of color at the bottom is that it's got a fair, 
fair bit of impasto medium mixed in with it, which means it's going to dry much, much quicker than the other canes. So we're going to be able to come back to this area later on, um, and this layer of paint will already have started to set up and dry. Crimson. We want to now paint that around the red, and then draw the red into it. So yeah, you actually, you might, if you can't see from back there, you might find it helpful just to come up and see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're close and we can't see. Are you sure? Are you sure you want to do that? Yeah. Oh, and this isn't even start. Oh, this isn't even start. <laughs> uh, we basically start here and just work our way along. Now, if you look at my son there, right, like that's much, much brighter and more intense because we're going to come over with another layer and work over top of it. Because we're painting on this dark, you still see the dark of the canvas kind of showing through. Um, so we're getting, that's why we're doing this right now, so that we can come back later. Now, once you've got it kind of blocked in, then you can go to kind of one of these medium-sized brushes. And this white, again, has a past the medium, because that looks white, but it is not white. That's Yeah, it's just titanium white and it's mixed with impasto medium. So if you look at, at the, the paint, the sun's in my finished painting probably have like four layers of titanium white where it might have dried and gone over it again and again and again. Is the impasto to make it more opaque or dry faster? Make it dry faster and I can put it on I can put it on thicker and it will dry faster. But mainly it gets to dry. shapes coming down towards the sun that, that are darker and wider at the edges of the painting and get narrower as we move down. And for this stage, I would say use the smaller the brush, the more control you will have, but the longer it will take you to cover the areas of the sky. So you might have to experiment just a little bit to see which brush that you have in front of you is the right size for you to be able to paint in between the branches and the colors, but you don't want to be using like the one hair brush at this stage. And again, at this stage, this is a good idea um, to err on the side of leaving a little gap between the strokes and the branches or the colors. You don't need to paint up exactly right to the edge. You can leave little bits of red. You get this type of effect here. And I'm going to continue with the blue and do a bunch of these things of the blue coming in. And then what I'll do is I'll do some with the purple, I'll do some with the greens. And as we get closer to the sun, um, these little pathways get narrower because what's going to happen is we're going to start with our bright colors and move away from the sun. 
That's a really good question. So if you guys just want to pay attention for one sec. So when you're painting, so you've painted your blue shapes in and now you're painting, you're painting some of the, the purple pathways or the greens, you can have them kind of run parallel to and mix in with, or you can have them kind of cut in behind and go to the other side. It really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, the whole idea is we want to we want to make sure we leave a fair bit of, of the red around the around the sun because we're going to eventually put our lightest and warmest colors in there so that the whole sky radiates out. like this normally take you dad? Uh, it normally take me four or five hours. Or but that. when I paint it quicker, it's only because I don't, I can't manufacture this intensity at yeah. home to paint this fast. If I could, I would. Because whenever I do these, they always turn out usually a little bit fresher. But after I, so I've blocked in this dark, which is I've actually mixed the green with some blue, with some purple. Um, and just put these strokes in. But now what I'm gonna do is on the side that kind of faces towards the sun, we're gonna put more of kind of a warm green color. And again, I'm not trying to paint trees. I'm just putting strokes of color in there. The eye will, will kind of make that up. Because the thing is, if you're gonna paint, if you're gonna paint a tree, then you gotta do a damn good tree. If you're just painting strokes of color that are suggestive of the tree, then you can get away with being a lot looser um, and not someone telling you, a tamarack doesn't grow like that, the branches go the other way, which people will do. <laughs> people say, what kind of tree is that? It's a dark one. I paint, I paint dark trees and light trees. Blend that in there with that. And if your paper towel starts getting all covered with paint, then get a fresh paper towel. I was using mine. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> and then we just do strokes like this, right? And then. I'm just concerned about the sun itself. The sun itself? I feel like you just don't want to Yeah, well, you went a little too light. So let's. So that's the beautiful thing about this alizarin crimson note. It's a really dark, transparent mm -hmm. color. So we could just bring that back. This is no longer yeah. going to be an original shot of Ripple. <laughs> my, my people aren't going to do it. Drastically <laughs> reduces its own yeah. value. Did you not hear my around. copyright thing? It was never going to be an original <laughs> shot of Ripple. That's right. <laughs> and, then, and then you can come back in with some of the orange here, too, and come back in this way. So what you need is you need some yellows in there, right? Okay. See how because you're you're going kind of right from yellow into kind of yeah. pink, but you don't have any of uh, here. Watch what happens when you do this. Watch what happens when I have more wine. <laughs> you know, it starts looking even. But that's the idea there, Everything right? Everyone looks better. But this this thing with the sun too, I often I'll often do work over it three times to get it that way and let it dry and come back. But they just know when they see something that looks like it's struck by light that that looks like it or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. so we're going to have to go really heavy here because you've already kind of gone that route. Gone that route. Otherwise, if the other option is um, don't do that next time. <laughs> You just go in. Can I? Sure. 
Yeah. 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 You're I gonna, know you I should, so you should leave these here, here. <laughs> because otherwise they're going to get paint all over the handles, okay. and then you're going to get all over your hands. Yes. And then you're, again, I don't care about in here, but you guys are getting into your cars after, and this paint will be wet for two or three days. Yeah. You also need a new paper towel. When if you're switching, like if you've got all like blues and stuff on the paper towel, you're using to clean your brush. I'm not. I'm using a separate one. Oh, okay. I've monopolized the whole friggin' roll. No, that's the first time I've ever seen it. Yeah. 200 submissions, and you sign it in perfectly dry strokes, then you'll create, you'll interrupt the unity of the painting because nowhere else in the painting do we have these hard, crisp strokes like that. So it just takes a little bit of practice, but the big thing I find is, again, having something to rest your hand on, and then just usually... I can I can do my first name in one stroke, but I need a little bit more paint to finish the uh, the last name. Or you can take a marker and write it on the back on the, on the wood. <laughs> yeah, but then how are people going to know that? No, that's not an issue. So that's it. So that's done. I might actually tomorrow do a little bit more, just resolving the sun. Um, Then I'll walk around and help you guys. I'm done. Okay. There it is. Show us set. It was fantastic. Tim was a fantastic host. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Everybody here was was uh, a joy to be around. And there's some some real talent in the room. I don't know if I'm one of the talented ones, <laughs> but uh, we had fun regardless. And um, I love Tim's work. It it reminds me of being in the in the wilderness and the outdoors as a young person. And um, it just has always spoken to me. So to take part in tonight is is. Uh, Really great. Um, if I had to summarize tonight, I would say it was educational, supportive, and fun. It was amazing. I have never painted before, and so this was a um, really great experience to do it this way and to sort of copy one of Tim's paintings because I just love them. Okay. It was awesome. Um, thank you, Tim, for inviting me. Um, I've been a fan of Tim's for many years, and uh, I love his use of color and light, and um, I don't know what else to say, but thank you. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I had a really great time. I learned a lot of uh, a lot of tips and a lot of techniques. I've always admired Tim's work and the vibrancy, and, and he is an excellent teacher. Really translated that well. Uh, that was a success. I got a painting made. Uh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks very much to uh, Tim and the uh, Packer family for putting this together. I uh, definitely would look forward to doing another one, and I will. Well, we want to thank you for all the hard work you, that went in behind all this. Um, it was a great opportunity. Um, you've met a great bunch of people. It was a wonderful experience, very enjoyable. I want to thank the whole Tim Packer family for putting this on, and Tim, you did a, you did a fabulous job with your artwork. It's just, you, someone once said you do the sun better than the real sun, and yeah, absolutely believe that, so thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm a longtime fan, first time painter. And I want to thank all the Packer family for uh, putting this together tonight. I can't wait until the next one where I want to learn how to paint these birch trees. <laughs> and uh, thank you again. Your gallery is lovely. And uh, I hope you continued success. enjoyed that. As you can see, I had a lot of fun and so did all of our attendees. I was also blown away by the quality of paintings, um, especially from a lot of first-time painters. So if you'd like to be uh, advised of all of our upcoming paint-alongs, as I said, you need to subscribe to my newsletter um, and our next one's coming out in a few days. So 
I will see you next time. I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time.